What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Sports Report. I'm your host, Emily Peters, and Happy New Year. It's 2024, and we haven't uh, spoken since last year, so... <laughs> I guess we're starting off this episode a little bit corny, so I do apologize about that. But it was right there. I had to do it. Anyway, uh, we're going to start off this 2024 by looking back at 2023 because the All Big Bend Awards came out back in December, and we haven't talked about them yet. So we're going to quickly go over those, and then I'll get to today's episode. As usual, I'm getting my information from the Tallahassee Democrat, so shout out to you guys over there. I appreciate your work. And like I said, this did come out back in December. So if you've already seen it, you can fast forward this part. But otherwise, I'm going to give you some insights. So starting off with the 2023 All Big Bend Specialist of the Year, it's Bobby Angstler from Childs High School, a phenomenal kicker, punter, you name it. He could place the ball anywhere. Uh, he's going to UF, so we will have to get past that. Uh, but he is an incredible talent. Uh, the Gators are getting a very good one. And Bobby, if it doesn't work out there, you can always come home. All right, moving on to the defensive player of the year is Ashton Hampton. Another one going to a questionable school for us Florida State fans. He's off to Clemson, uh, but such an incredible talent. Played on both sides of the ball. Uh, definitely well-deserved, and congratulations to him. Offensive player of the year is Hayden Cleese, our guy from Wakulla. Uh, just such a great story. I, I I was just so excited watching him and his father this year after last season. You know, we know their story at this at this point. So uh, congratulations, Hayden. He is off to Samford. Uh, and I heard a rumor that him and Ethan Fisher from NFC will be roommates at Samford. That could be wrong. So don't necessarily quote me on that one. I'm going to give that one off to Ben and Eric. They're the little birdies that told me that one. But hey, if that's true, that's really cool. They got a couple boys from Tallahassee off to Samford. So good luck to you guys. Congratulations. Next one is our coach of the year, which is Price Harris, and I could not be more excited for him getting all Big Bend coach of the year. I mean, obviously they they lost in that state title uh, championship, but second year he's doing incredible over at Madison County, and I wish him so much luck and so much congratulations for the season that he has had, and I know he's only going to build on that, so congratulations to Coach Harris. Uh, and now I'm just going to rattle off a few of the first team guys. Uh, there's a lot, so we won't go through everyone for time's sake. But obviously we got Hayden Cleese in there for the quarterbacks, along with J.P. Pickles, one of our favorite quarterback matchups this year. We got to see them face off at NFC. Uh, Wakulla came away with that one. If you remember, or if, if you watch the game or, you know, whatever, you know, the outcome of that one, but two really, really incredible quarterbacks, uh, Sam Ron Brinson, Ashton Hampton and Nazir Williams from Gadsden County. Uh, Williams is from Gadsden County, Ashton Hampton and, uh, Ashton Hampton's from Florida high. We already, we already talked about him, the Clemson boy, and then Samron Brinson over at Wakulla, incredible talent. Uh, those are your receivers. A few of the running backs, Jay Sean Washington from Lincoln, Jaden Threats from Florida High, which this one, this one made me smile because he took over for Makai Danzi, who is one of the most dynamic playmakers in the entire country, committed to Florida State. He knows where the good guys are. Uh, but Jaden Threats took over for Makai after he got injured early to mid season, uh, and just really did a great job, obviously filled those shoes well and found himself as a first team member for the offense. So congratulations, Jaden, uh, Quay Lewis, Gadsden County, uh, Camarian battles, Rickards got Rickards on the board over here. And then just a few more Jeremiah Thomas and Delvion Zanders, a few Wakulla boys, uh, Austin Perkins over at Gadsden County and Jason McDaniel over at Madison County. So congratulations to all you guys. And to the guys I didn't mention, congratulations to you guys too. Uh, it's just, it's, it's so great. I'm so excited for them. 
And a lot of these guys have really great places that they're going next year. They've got very bright futures if they stay healthy, which we want. And if they, you know, stay on track, keep the work ethic up. So congratulations to all of you guys. Now, today we're getting to today's interview. And I mentioned a couple of uh, Gadsden County guys in this first team roster. Uh, and what I think I think was a little bit lost in our season of FNR this year was how talented Gadsden County was. They have some incredible athletes, and we're going to hear from their head coach today. It's Russell Ellington. Uh, Gadsden County went six and five this season. Round one of the playoffs, they lost to Wakulla, so it was a little bit short. Uh, but it doesn't undermine what these guys can do. There is so much talent on this team from the seniors to the freshmen. Uh, something really interesting that Coach Ellington told me was that there is a guy in every grade level with an offer from you know a school at the next level. So don't count them out. They've got some young guys coming up, a young quarterback that is pretty good. So... Uh, we should be seeing some good things from for them uh, moving forward with Coach Ellington and all their guys. So I will go ahead and play this interview for you, and uh, no no further ado. So here is uh, Russell Ellington from Gadsden County. I do really appreciate you taking some time. I know it's I know it's crazy busy, um, so thank you for joining me. Oh, no problem. Um, we came out last year to Monroe, so I am a little bit curious about that transition. And you know, you just went right down the road over to Gadsden, and you know, how has that transition been for you? Uh, the transition has been pretty good. It's been pretty smooth. Um, the schools are about like two miles apart from each other, um, so I was real familiar with the the kids over here because um, they're community kids as well. Um, so that made the transition pretty easy. Um, obviously, Gadsden is a bigger school, uh, so I have more kids to work with and things of that nature. So I just feel like I'm able to touch the community a little bit more. Was that sort of the push to take that job over at Gadsden? Um, well, that and at the end of the day, um, I always wanted to coach a you know a larger division of football, um, only because at the end of the day, if you win at the one S level, um, there's always a but included in it. It's like, hey, yeah, they they're a good one S team, but you know they probably would never beat the bigger school. So at the end of the day, I just wanted to get at a larger institution that I can you know prove myself and my coaching staff can prove themselves as well. Right, and I mean talking about that program. Last year, two and eight, you've come in, and it seems like a complete shift. So what has allowed you to do that? Um, just the buy-in, the buy-in from the kids, the buy-in from the administration, the buy-in from the teachers on campus. Um, everybody, when I came in, said they wanted to change the culture. and That started with, you know, here at school and, you know, getting the GPA together, making sure everyone was going to class, things like that. Um, and once we fixed those things, you know, the football part was easy because, you know, everybody wants to win. Um, everybody wants to go to college, but they just don't know how to accomplish that. So what we said, what we said as a staff, we said we we're going to just basically come in and pour into these kids and, and give them everything that they deserve. And they've responded very, very well. I definitely want to talk about that coaching staff you have because I've done a little research. It seems very special. You have Harold Nelson as your offensive coordinator, and I know you guys go way back. So what's that dynamic like? And I know it's probably very exciting for you guys to be coaching together again. Um, well, we actually – so there actually was a change with that um, because he – well, he wanted to be here. I wanted him to be here, but some things didn't work out with the school. Oh, um, no. So, yeah, so we're going to have to try that again next year. So I'm, I'm going to be excited to re, you know, put that back in for next year. Um, but right now our offensive coordinator is Tyree Johnson. Um, he was my offensive coordinator with me at Monroe. Um, so, you know, we kind of kind of talk the same language. We kind of have the same philosophy. Um, so it, it was a smooth transition with him. Okay, well, that's good. Found a good one. And then maybe yes, bring sir. Nelson on next year. 
Oh, and then definitely, yes, ma'am. You also have Coach Corndog, which I love that nickname. Is that oh, has yeah. that always been his nickname, or is that new? Yeah, so I think they gave him that. He played at Madison County back in the day, and then played at Florida State under Bobby Bowden. Um, and I think he's had that nickname since then because um, he was smaller in stature, uh, but <laughs> but he was uh, like he a corn was, dog. Really, yeah, but he was a really really good ball player. So um, you know, nicknames are part of this football <laughs> thing. So that's one that stuck with him. But he's an aw- awesome defensive coordinator. Um, he also uh, trains a lot of kids in the area. Um, so a lot of the kids at Florida High, like Ashton Hampton and those guys that we'll be going against, um, you know, we're all familiar because they train with him and things like that. So it should be one big family affair on Friday. Okay. I love that dynamic. And he's also, he works with Florida State too, which I think that's really cool. And I feel like that probably adds a level of experience to his coaching, like at the high school level. So, you know, I mean, how does that kind of add to your coaching staff? Oh, it's awesome. Like I said, he always keeps me on point, uh, helps out with a lot of the uh, organizing and things like that. Uh, He not only played at Florida State, he was a grad assistant coach there. Um, He also was a college coach at Tennessee State. Um, So at the end of the day, just the experience that he gives us is invaluable. And um, we're lucky to have him. One more coach I just wanted to talk about briefly was – Coach Travis Gordon is his first year with the program. He's our assistant head coach and co-defensive coordinator. Um, and he's been awesome as well. Um, he's a community guy, so he's been vital in, you know, bringing the community together, um, you know, help us meet the people we need to meet in the community to get support and things like that because most of the coaching staff is not from Gaffin County. So at the end of the day, having him is huge uh, with the bridge that gap between, you know, community and football. When you have a coaching staff that you believe in, I feel like it's – you know, not easier, but a little better to get the kids to buy in because you guys are all together. So, oh yeah, and it's, yeah, it starts with the it starts with the top. So we got to have good leadership to pass down to the to the team. Speaking of coaches, too, I noticed on your Twitter and also Coach Corndog's Twitter, Twitter, you guys reach out and kind of tweet at Coach Prime. He's having a lot of success over there in Colorado, which is fun to see. But did you guys have like a friendship with him or any kind of relationship in the past? Um, No, we haven't. Uh, he did come to Gaston County to play here a couple years ago. Um, and we have a couple kids getting recruited by Colorado. But at the end of the day, um, we just like what he's doing. At the end of the day, he's bringing a swagger and a level of confidence to college football that – you know, we kind of want to mirror and, 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 and you know, kind of try to imitate that at the high school level because um, it's working. At the end of the day, um, you can stay you can stay the course with, you know, the old school way, which it works for some guys. But at the end of the day, you know, these kids, they, they want something new and fresh. So at the end of the day, we're trying to be players, coaches, and right now he's the best at doing it, him and Kirby Smart. So at the, at the end of the day, we kind of want to emulate those guys because, you know, Kirby's a player's coach as well. I see him on Twitter. I think actually this morning I just saw a tweet and it was like, you know, do you celebrate? Do you get excited? And he was like, well, Santa doesn't have time to stop and enjoy cookies. So, no, we don't stop. And I don't know. It was just an interesting quote, but I loved it. Oh, yeah. And I love it. Like I said, he played at the highest level. It's not it's not every day you see a Hall of Famer, you know, pouring back, taking the time, pouring back into the kids and stuff when he really doesn't have to. So, like I said, we definitely admire what he's doing and. Uh, You know, obviously we want to kind of take a few things out of his page and hopefully bring it to the high school level. I want to kind of build on that, too, because you and your coaching staff, like you mentioned, did play at the next level. So you know what it takes to be successful. I mean, not only do you have to be a great player, but you have to work really hard. And you 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 guys understand that. So how do you kind of relay that to your team? Uh, like you said, just kind of by uh, example, and like I said, we've we've been blessed to coach a lot of kids who have moved on to the next level. So we make sure the kids talk. We also make sure uh, just basically their academics and everything are in order. Because at the end of the day, like we try to tell them, you can be the greatest football player ever. Um, if your NCAA clearinghouse and stuff is not up to par, or your transcript you really have no chance of going anywhere. So basically at the end of the day, we let them know if you're a good athlete, college is really going to take care of itself, but we have to make sure 
that we have the academics play in place and also our image is good. Like I told them, we don't need to have all these crazy social media names and all those things. Just just market yourself. And that's kind of the biggest thing that we brought over here. Uh, we kind of brought it to Monroe um, and it kind of it worked out for us. So we're just trying to do the same thing, lead by example and let them know the little things do matter. You're doing a really good job at helping me segue questions because another another thing I wanted to build on was the social media aspect. I know you're very active on Twitter and I see you retweeting some of your kids' things. How important is it to market yourself on social media in this day and age? Yeah, so right now it's everything. Um, At the end of the day, there was a time when I was playing, I graduated high school in 2008. and at the end of the day, we had DVDs for our highlights back then. Um, a few years after that, Huddle came into place. And, you know, people would get their Huddle film and email it off to coaches. But now, at the end of the day, coaches do a lot of their interactions on Twitter. So, like I tell the kids, um, you have a direct line to coaches now where they're looking at your tweets, they're looking at your coaches' tweets. So, social media is kind of the new wave of recruitment and and marketing with these new NIL deals and all those things. So uh, we're just trying to change with the times and at the end of the day give the kids all the exposure that they deserve and need Um, and not saying that if people aren't doing that, that's the wrong way. We just kind of, you know, we're trying to change with the times and, and, and just give the kids the best opportunity. That's huge what you mentioned, having a direct pipeline to the coaches, because I'm sure back in the day it was a little bit harder to find the coaches and get in contact, unless maybe your high school coach knew the coach or had some kind of contact. So that's huge for the kids. Oh, yes, man. Yeah, back when I was in school, the high school coach had the final say-so, or whether you went to college or if you got <laughs> told that a school sent you something and things like that. But now – at the end of the day, yes, they still need the coaches, you know, to speak up for them and stuff. But at the end of the day, if your coach is not working for you, you still can, you know, get out there and market yourself. Let's get into some of those kids. I want to start with Josiah Knight, simply because he's committed to Illinois, and that's a familiar place for you. So talk to me about him. Uh, Josiah, he, he's a great kid. He's one of my leaders on the team. Um, he's actually one of the main reasons. Well, one of the reasons that I took the job over here, because I know we had a good foundation, you know, with him and Najee Williams and a couple other guys. So um, he's been a joy to be around. Um, Him choosing Illinois was a surprise for me. Um, And the reason that was, at the end of the day, the kids lean on me for advice and stuff, but I never want to, like, push them to go to a certain school or anything like that because – at the end of the day, they're the ones who have to wake up in the morning and make it there and, you know, work out and do all those things. So I want them to be happy about the choice that they make and their family makes. Um, but going to Illinois myself, I definitely was excited when he came and told me that that's, <laughs> that's where he was going, <laughs> uh, you know, because we need some more help up there. But, no, nah, he, he's a great one, and I, I see big things in his future. There are some other kids, too, that are getting some attention from some big schools. Jeremiah McLeod, I saw he visited FSU. Who are some other kids that you see with some futures ahead? Oh, well, we have a lot, actually. So um, in our senior class, just start with the senior class, uh, Austin Perkins uh, has about five offers right now. Um, He's going to decide soon in the next month or so. Um, Kimarian Gatchin is a senior. He's committed to Valdosta State. Um, Angel Lopez is a senior. He's committed to Valdosta State and still getting recruited by some others. Um, Nazir Williams, he's committed to Central Michigan. Um, and then we have other seniors who are getting looked at in our junior class. Uh, Lamar Williams, right tackle. He has offers from Miami, Florida State, um, Ole Miss, pretty much everybody except for Georgia and Alabama at the moment. Um like you said, Jeremiah McLeod, he has about six offers right now. University of Georgia just follow him as well. Wow. He'll be visiting them this weekend. Um, Byron Jackson is another big name that will be showing up. Uh, Jamari Stokes, he's a safety for us in the 25 class. He has about five offers. Um, and Oklahoma is looking at him really close as well. Um, in the 26th class, in the sophomore class, uh, we have Jacoby Green who starts for us in the offensive line. He has about seven offers. Um, Rodarian Jones, he's a cornerback for us. He's a sophomore. He has about ten offers with uh, Oklahoma, Miami leading the way. Um, And then our freshman quarterback, Landon Doherty, he has uh, two offers, FAMU and Central Michigan. So we have a kid in every grade level with an offer, um, and we just plan on building on that and 
trying to bring in more talent and show kids you don't have to leave Gaston County to make it. So you don't have to go to Tallahassee in order to, um, you know, go to go Division One or anything like that. We have opportunities out here for you as well. That freshman quarterback is someone that caught my eye too, Landon. I mean, and he's yeah. only a freshman. So, you know, what are you guys doing with him? Uh, he's going to be pretty good. He um, he has the measurables. He has the arm and everything. Um, his dad played Division One football, so he has the pedigree. His mom played I think the original one volleyball. So um, he he has the athletic pedigree. Um, great kid. We're blessed to get him here. Um, his future is really, 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 really bright. Like I see him ending up as one of the top quarterbacks in the country um, and hosting a lot of offers. So we're blessed to have him. Um, right now, though, he is a freshman, so we're not trying to, uh, you know, put the game on his shoulders. Uh, we really want him just to come out and do his part. And if he comes out and does his part and, you know, follows the seniors' lead, uh, he'll have a special freshman year. So back into your team a little bit. Do you, do you guys do anything in the off season? any kind of camps to strengthen as a team? Uh, oh, yeah, we did a lot of camps. Uh, we've been working since June, really. Um, the kids started off going to a lot of individual camps to get noticed, do individual college camps to get noticed on their own. Uh, we went to... Florida State seven v seven. Um, with the where else did we go? Uh, I think we went to Georgia, was it Georgia Tech seven v seven. We went to Jacksonville State in Alabama seven v seven camp. Um, so then we also went to a contact camp in Bainbridge uh, to, against some Georgia schools. So we had some time this summer to build some camaraderie and also kind of see who we were um, before the season started. So and I I see all that stuff paying off. It's it's um it's all starting to pay off now. Do you guys have a team motto? Um, right now, it's just, it's just work. Um, that, that's been their motto for a couple of years when Corey Fuller was here. Um, and at the end of the day, we just wanted to adopt that and pick that back up. It's, it's, at the end of the day, no matter how big the game is with Florida High or Lounge or whoever it is, you know, the motto is just work. And at the end of the day, you know, at 48 minutes, we'll figure out <laughs> who's the victor. Um, but I, like I tell our kids, if we work really hard and are really disciplined, I don't really see too many teams that can beat us. It's just when we unravel when things don't go our way and things like that. So that'll be the biggest thing for Friday night as well, just making sure um, we stay disciplined, we stay you know, committed to the game plan, even when things don't go our way. So that's about it for like official questions I have. Is there anything that you want to talk about with your team or coaching staff or anything else you want to mention? Um, I, not really. Just kind of just want to piggyback on again how hard these kids have been working. Um, you know, they've been told so many times that you know it's going to take a while for them to become a winning program and all those things, and they have definitely you know showed otherwise this year, and hopefully continue to show otherwise this year because there is definitely talent in Gaston County. Um, it, it just has to be shown. So at the end of the day, I hope we continue to do that, but. Uh, going against Florida High, especially on a live TV um, broadcast, is, I mean, it's, it's nothing but exposure. So we just have to do the right thing with it and, and, and come out and play hard and put on a good show for Gaston County. That's one of my favorite things about doing these games is just I know the kids get excited to see us out there with the cameras. And, you know, like oh, yeah. you said, it is good exposure <laughs> for them. So I love it. They're, I, it just makes me so happy to see them excited. And then the big trophy at the end, they're just, they're tickled. Oh, yeah. That's why I said I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. Well, Coach, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Oh, I appreciate you. And like I said, I'm, I'm happy that you guys are coming out. And like I said, it's a blessing for Gadsden County. And hopefully we can get y'all out every year. We got to win to do that. But hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this will be a stop you guys want to come to. Thank you again to Coach Ellington. Again, they went 6-5 and five this year, which uh, is a huge step in the right direction for Gadsden County High School. I believe they were 2-8 and eight last year. Uh, so Coach Ellington is doing very great things with that team. So good luck to all of them in the future. And thank you again so much for working with me, chatting with me, and letting me be a part of your football game. Now, looking forward, we are going to talk to Quentin Lewis. He is the head coach at Rickards High School, 
And my favorite stories of the season came from Coach Lewis this year. I had a fantastic conversation with him. He is an awesome coach, an awesome man, uh, and I really respect Rickards High School and everything they're doing over there. So I'm very excited to put that episode together. I'm going to put a period on this one right now. So thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you guys have a healthy, happy 2024. Uh, I hope you have a great rest of your week. And again, thank you so much for listening.